for me it's okay okay uh, i will record this session uh, to allow others to to follow along, along and and can watch the video later i will try to post it on the the notes on the the section on the meeting page so i would like to to start by thanking all for having the the time and for uh, all the, the the contribute and support to to move uh, this space seven forward and uh, without any further ado we have a, a big agenda so let's get started um this uh, are the, the highlights from the previous uh, meeting. We just uh, revisited our uh, priorities list and, and discussed about uh, metadata strategies for entities. And we came up with uh, some decisions regarding this. Uh, we move the, we, we, we choose to, to move the PR 2443 as is and um, involve uh, the CAT group to discuss the, the replacement of Dublin Core schema with schema.org, which is a more rich one, and uh, give us the, the answers that we need. Uh, and uh, the other point is related with uh, additional data per relations. Uh, we decided to, to give uh, um, a focus on the, the author variant use case. I don't re quite remember if it is all. Uh, so um, we also um, are currently working on this uh, document. Um, at Meyer started to, by Levin and, and others. And um, regarding the, the this, these are the, the priorities in our list. So we we just created, and, and I will try to to get back to this one. We created a, a mockup for the submission process. How can we integrate uh, entities in the the submission process? Well, how can we relate? A person with a publication. This is the, the use case that we study. And um, some uh, requests to, to, to give an answer for, for a baseline uh, for uh, metadata fields. And um, the discussions that we had about the metadata relations and labels uh, on that relations. I think, uh, Levan, you, you have something to add uh, to this on the today's meeting. And, uh, and we start an initial uh, specification for how OpenR4 will be implemented uh, using entities. So, uh, our today's agenda uh, is this big one. Uh, we had just killed the, the first topic. So, uh, revisiting priorities, I will uh, pass the, the word to, to, to José, uh, which has uh, this um, suggestion, the, the number 14. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the this new uh, requisite, is is something that we already discussed uh, internally regarding the, the systems we manage, repositories, uh, Aguster, and also the way we need to manage uh, the information from the repositories. And one aspect that is very important um, and it's related to the way we correlate the information between the publication and the author. Um, if we look something uh, very at a high level, 
we have a, a relation between a publication and the author. And then if we look further, we need to specify first is one of the use cases uh, regarding the author name variants. So someone has a specific name for a particular publication, but also it may have a specific uh, affiliation on that particular publication. So the question here, here is to uh, or, or maybe uh, use the, the same approach for these two uh, situations, because in both we'll have a relation between the person and the publication that has some kind of um, intermediate attributes between the publication and the author. So it's it's an author related to a publication with some specific attributes that is a specific name and specific affiliations. Uh, this allows us to uh, create later uh, reports based on the affiliation. For example, if you want to provide a report for a, a research center, uh, we make a filter by the affiliation and not by the person who is part of the uh, this particular affiliation. So this is a, a new aspect that we should consider uh, and also it's something that will uh, resolve this uh, issue between the relation of the author and the publication. And it's also a, a, a use case very important regarding the repositories themselves to be able to later report on that information. Uh, or make, for example, a specific um, uh, lists of publication per uh, affiliation or organization. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if anyone had has anything to to add to to what uh, Jose just mentioned. Um, yeah, we this is something we also discussed last week. Um, and so if you um, go back to the example, the question okay. Okay. that we need to answer here is, um, so you can make a link between the author and the publication and you can make an independent link between the, the organizational unit or the department and the publication. That is already possible with how the system is designed today. Okay, but I think we will have a problem that is related with the. Um, I, I can see as a, a, a photograph. Uh, you take the the photograph when you when you you did this publication. This means that when you change uh, your affiliation or some, this this value cannot be changed because uh, João, João did uh, this work when he was at FCT, not when he was yeah, so at... The, so the link between FCT and the publication is a direct link between those two entities. So it doesn't go through the person. So the link will never change. Yes. And the only... Um, thing that you don't know in that case is which author has which affiliation because here you have two affiliations fct and uh, uh, universidad dominio and um, you wouldn't know which of the authors belongs to which um, organizational unit but Did, if that is yeah sorry sorry to, to to interrupt yeah, you. So in, in this case, you would have a, a, a link between uh, uh, Joao Mendes Moreira and the publication, and you would also have a link between FCT and the publication. The only thing that you wouldn't know is that Joao is um, from FCT, where uh, Jose Carvalho is from, uh, from Minho. So that, that would be the only thing that you don't know. But the question is, do you need to know that for any particular report? Uh, first of all, I think we need this to better describe the, the document in terms of the, the metadata that we uh, provide. Um, 
then I think for uh, funding, because FCT is is a, a funding agency in Portugal, I think for funding funding pr purpose, we need to know if, uh, for instance, Katia Laranjeira, she uh, did uh, any research, funded research on that area, and uh, uh, if that project is funded. This means, so you, yeah. So, but you could do a query that says, "Give me all the publications related to Katia, and only consider the ones that have an affiliation to FCT." For instance, so, okay. but you don't know for sure whether the link between FC whether Katia was related to FCT or some other organization at that time. You, that's something you do not know. Yeah, yeah, that make me think if we. <laughs> I think this is a, a, a evolving issue and will grow up as we uh, have some more um, insight. I think firstly we need to have this. Um, we we need to have this first first baseline and then we evolve. Um, I, this means I think we this this uh, uh, sorry my colleague is speaking at the same time and um, I don't I don't know if um, this is the uh, uh, the major priority or we can uh, give it to to a further version. No, it very much depends on which kind of reports you need to generate. So if you need to know, okay, how many publications were linked to FCT and funded by FCT, you can do this with the current solution. Yes. If you really need to know how many projects or, or uh, how many publications were published by Katia in, um, while she was working at FCT, then this this solution wouldn't work because you're not sure if there are more than one author and more than one affiliation. You're not certain that a particular author is affiliated to a particular institution. So with the current solution that is more simple in design and, and simpler in implementation, you can already generate quite a lot of reports um, but there are some cases where you um, would need to have the link between the author and the organizational unit. But I have currently not heard any example of a particular report where that is needed. So as long as that is not needed, we don't need to have these three-way um, or triple relations or the, the, the adding the affiliation um, to... Um, the relation between the author and the publication. And that is an implementation that's quite a bit more complex. And so as long as there are no concrete use cases that people bring forward, we would avoid doing that in DSpace 7. If there are very concrete um, use cases where this um, would be necessary, then it can be implemented. There is a proposal for it. We have been discussing this also with uh, the Brazilian uh, funding agency, and uh, I think they were the ones that uh, uh, rose this this uh, they brought this this question. Um, I, we can can discuss this with them. Yes, the the question here here is I I think. It's more of the way we we implement, uh, which is different in the way we we manage the information we need, because uh, we have here a relation between, um, and if we consider a, a basic approach, we'll have a relation between the publication and the person, a person that has uh, some uh, affiliations and then we'll have a relation between a specific affiliation and the publication. What we, we need to make sure 
to this to work is to have the same information on the relation between the publication and the affiliation where the affiliation is the same than the affiliation of the author so we can easily make a, a connection between these three aspects with different uh, uh, set of queries i can just show you uh, my screen uh, paulo can you just stop just one yes, minute sure. and here's some uh, practical examples of that particular use case uh, so can you see my my screen yes okay uh, so the question is that we we have uh, one author that is part of different uh, departments and research centers so we take the the person john do uh, who has three different affiliations a b and c uh, for a specific publication he may use one two the three or just uh, another one okay so he may depending on the topic he is writing they choose different affiliations so um what we want is uh, to include the relation between that publication that person um, and and this affiliation uh, so this is important in the way we want to manage these two different entities the person and the affiliation um, and with this we we can have all the information we need to be able to do that uh, the, these reports what i i think uh, is as a second step we can mix that use case with the use case of uh, the name variant so for a specific person that has a specific arc id uh, he has a publication with a specific alternative name which is uh, do g and two affiliations and uh, we can have then another relation where that specific person with a specific orchid uh, has a relation with a publication with a different name and also another publication so and this is the way we we want or need to be able to distinguish on that um, uh, that context of managing the information on the repositories uh, and and this same context for example uh, as alternative names it's a concept that is also usual for example for organizations where we can have uh, different names um, associated with different uh, publications but uh, it connects to one unique uh, organization with a specific identifier so basically here what we have is a an entity with an identifier and then that entity can have different alternative a way to be show like the name and the, the affiliation and uh, the use case we can have here is say, that uh, yes sorry sorry to interrupt you we have uh, uh, this big agenda to to address to yes yes, yes. i i think uh, this uh, uh, subject or matter should be brought to another meeting and uh, for we to have time to discuss the, the all the other points if you all agree with this uh, sorry mm -hmm. okay 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 i will try also to make um, uh, an example based on the existing uh, concept to to okay thank okay. you can get that uh, okay okay, okay. Can quickly say one one thing about this so um I, I understand that the, 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 the workaround you've just uh, presented, um, but the, the, the question still remains, like I would like to see a use case of a report that really requires this, that really requires you to know which person was affiliated to which organization for a particular publication. So far, I haven't seen 
any example report that really requires this. Okay, okay. And as long as we don't have a concrete report or you say, okay, yes, for this report, you really need this, I would avoid implementing even a workaround. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I agree. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Okay, another, uh, anyone has anything more to, to add what we have discussed or something related with the priorities list? Okay, so we'll jump to the third point, uh, which is related with the, the author name variants and picking what just uh, uh, Jose was uh, uh, showing showing us um, I will uh, I, I would I think we, we can revisit uh, the 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 mockups for, for the submission process for for those that uh, didn't watch the the first time um, this is what uh, we thought initially this this isn't uh, this isn't the, the, the closed uh, version, but but uh, uh, is open to, to discuss, discussion and contributions. Um, what we thought uh, in this um, submission form was that in the authors field we could uh, type uh, some name and some results were suggested and if none of the the results were the the one that i was searching for i could search for more results uh, i will then uh, be present with uh, uh, an interface uh, uh, model uh, window with uh, some filters some results this is the the this isn't the, the initial proposition this uh, was so this means that uh, um, I could pick one of uh, the results and uh, accept and add a second author or something like that. Um, let me go back to that uh, version. Uh, um, this uh, is one of the the topics that we uh, have been discussing the the need for having uh, different name variants or uh, assigned to a publication uh, different name variants and how in the um, the user interface aspect can we solve this uh, i i'm I didn't show this to our um, user uh, interface expert because he's on vacation. So uh, I will try to to ask him for some advice and some recommendations to 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 enhance or to to improve this because we aren't totally satisfied. But but the idea was that the user could uh, pick one of the um, one of the um, name variants uh, and or uh, type uh, one if none of the 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 author's uh, name variant was listed here or person name variants was listed here and one uh, other aspect that we have uh, i think we, we, we can uh, better improve the 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 experience for the user is to uh, have a button or something that is uh, triggers the, the the creation of a new entity right on this um, form or search search component. 
Um, this was what I was um, uh, want to to show you. I don't know if you have any. Uh, I, I will try to to update that uh, file that uh, that is attached to to the um, to the wiki page um, with this change. But uh, I would I would like to to hear from you. What do you think about it? Do you think it's a, um, it's anyone there? <laughs> I okay. think, it's, I think okay. it's quite thorough. Okay. And I wonder whether some populations of submitters might find it too thorough and you know, we might need a, a way to simplify it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I at the moment haven't my uh, our uh, user interface expert here to 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 get some feedback from him, but um, I'll try to do that. So um, we had also been thinking about how to design this, and we were thinking more in a, a kind of a two-step approach, where um, if you click on the author John Doe and the system sees that um, no, not click like that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> when you would select it, uh, when you would select that author, um, that you would then have a second step where the system asks you in the case of if that author has a name okay. Variant, okay. to select the name variant. So the the main reason is technical because we would like to be able to reuse the way that the okay. search component. Um, exists today in as many places as possible. And with what you have designed here, you would need to basically create a new view of the search results, yes. which would be specific to only this part of the repository, where if you just put it in two steps, you also let the user think less. You should ask for some input on the from the expert on that as well. But mm -hmm. that way you don't have to think so much about the first step. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's this John Doe. You click on it and then you get the question of uh, which name variant would you like to use or would you like to add a new name variant. That would also make the implementation of adding a new name variant um, simpler or cleaner um, than if you would do it all in one list. So that, that would be our, um, that's the, the, the direction we are going in at the moment. Okay, uh, if you agree, I can update this uh, version and add that um, uh, suggestion. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Because we're also thinking of a little bit more dynamic approach um, in the sense that accept and cancel would not be um, so necessary so that you can have this window open and keep it open for as long as you're adding um, uh, authors that are entities to the list of authors. Okay. You don't have to click accept every time and then click again on lookup, but that you just now, for example, click on the first John Doe, then select its name variant, and then you're still in this window and you can search for another one. And so you can add more um, authors more easily but yeah we it's a discussion we've only had this week and um, somebody's looking into our UI expert is looking into um, the design and we're also looking at all of the other use cases for example if you're submitting a new person and you want to attach the 20 publications that that person already has um, to um, to the uh, as relations to the person and that person could have published it under different names. So it could be Doe comma John or Doe comma J or whatever, so that you can just you know keep doing your searches at first, do a search for Doe comma John and then add five publications to the list and then just do another search and just keep doing that while that one window is open. Um, but we will have a, a proposal as well. I 
probably by the next meeting. Um, okay. 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 Thank you. You know, one thing that appeals to me about the two-step approach is it would allow us to separate identifying the person you mean from adding information like you know, a name variant. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Putting all of that up, up front might uh, in, uh, scare the the user. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I agree. Yeah, but there's also the other uh, side to it that if you're looking for a person with a particular name variant, that you might not find that name variant in the list, and you might get confused as well. So. Um, but that could be resolved by adding the name variants that are in the system into the search results without the option to actually select that name variant. So that's another thing we should keep uh, or keep in mind. Okay. Um, this pull requests these pull requests uh, raise some uh, questions about the the structure I, I don't know if ben or alexander it's here no alexander just said that he had to leave so. okay um but I think the the the, the only uh, thing uh, that uh, rose some question w w was the this uh, relationship type uh, relationship uh, attributes to true. So that can definitely be implicit. So there's no need for that to be present. But the changing the type attribute to state that it's a relationship would imply that we no longer know what the uh, type for the plain text lookups or the plain text entry would be. So if you're and if you're submitting authors for a publication, you would want to know that uh, when you're not doing a search for an entity, you want to be able to see a last name and a first name box, and that has a type name at the moment. So I think that's kind of uh, blocking at the moment what, how, how to further progress with this pull request. I, I was the only one, I, I don't think, uh, Alexander also, uh, to, 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 to add that block that you just mentioned. Um, because of my experience with other platforms and, and how they they describe fields and um, I thought that it was better to have a different kind of field here uh, because we all we already have uh, one um, I think it's two, two, two fields or two, two text I don't I don't quite remember the I think it's two field, two fields on the, the input type. So um, you you already have several types of fields to describe text fields. Uh, I, I thought it was better to have one that uh, um, describes relationships or s special types of relationships. The, the way that the REST contract was actually here, approached here was uh, quite similar to a metadata field with an authority lookup. So if, if you check out how, um, for instance, the authors are being defined right now, uh, and I included the link to the, to the REST contract uh, in the chat here, uh, that just states, okay, there's an input 
with type name. Uh, there's a label for it. It's just a little bit lower, yes. So that contains all of the details and you could have an authority control lookup in, in there as well. Uh, and I tried to keep it as closely to this uh, format as possible and just say, okay, apart from being able to store metadata in DC contributor order, we can also look up metadata uh, from a specific relationship uh, being in this case, uh, the is author of publication relationship. But in order to combine both the name, um, the input the input type name, where you can enter a last name and a first name, and do the lookup, that specific type was still going to be relevant to, to, to be able to state that it's a name box. You just you just said that we have this uh, name type or the, the yes. will dismemble into uh, input type field and one box and two box all of them um, they um, they have different um, um, working modes but they all they all are related to a single uh, uh, a single uh, metadata field. They are all, well, each metadata field has one input type being a name box, a one box uh, text area. So that, that's always defined. And if you're mixing entities, lookups and, meta, and plain text met metadata entry, you'd still need to know in what kind of type, what type of box do you want to enter your plain text metadata? Do you want to use a one box? Do you want to use a name box? Do you want, uh, well, text areas are probably not going to be that likely. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's my point. Perhaps we, we will not have the, the need to use all the, the, the existing uh, field types to, to create relationships. Or to to have the the same the relationships and text uh, uh, fields at the same time, perhaps we have yeah, just one or two cases that we need to uh, extend the. the ex you do need to be able to choose them, and keeping the structure the same would make that <clears throat> a lot easier to 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 render in the in the Angular UI, so that you can say, okay, this is a name box. But what's the difference about this, uh, the one that's that's here on the top and the one that's in the pull request? Only that there is now a, a selectable relationship where you can say, okay, I'll, I also want to be able to build a relationship of the type is author of publication. But it's still a name box uh, with the same label, with the same mandatory details. Uh, all of the those. Uh, properties are still applicable, but you just also have an option to uh, search for related items. And if we state that the, the type is now a, a relationship, we no longer know how to render the plain text type. I agree, uh, but uh, you can have different uh, field types even for relationships i don't know if it's it, it is clear what i've just uh, said uh, you can have uh, one uh, field type that is kind of one box but has relationships and can be called relationship or you can have one that uh, is uh, relationship authors and has this concrete behavior and um, it, it is called a different. Uh, so you're actually suggesting to um, use a, a different type. So you have name and one box and then you would have 
a relationship with a one box and a relationship with a name as a type. Yes, kind of that. Yes. If you uh, agree, or if you if that you... would reduce the reusability, I think in in the Angular UI, because now you could have a component where you say, okay, I have this name input type and it's rendered like this, or I have a one box input type and it's rendered like this, and then you have optionally also a lookup feature to be able to uh, to enter met to enter the uh, or to search for the related entities. I tend to agree, but, but uh, to me, I, I put all those things in a specific box. I don't mix the, them together, making them more complex than they are currently are. But uh, um, if others agree that uh, the, the way it's to, to have, to, I think you, you just said that we can, inherit or can know if the, the this has uh, this is this have uh, relationships based on something that is defined here i can recall um, let me try to see i think a, an additional problem with that approach would be that if you also have a field that could have and authority control and relationships that you need another field specific or field type specific for each of those combinations so you would add up with a lot of different field types which makes it also more difficult for somebody to configure the system or now you can just think like okay i want a name if that's plain text, it needs to have an, uh, the, the, na the name input type. And then do I want to add a relationship? Yes or no. Do I want to add the ability for authority control? Yes or no. And you're done. And that's much more simple than having to look for another input type that supports either plain text plus relation or plain text plus authority control or plain text plus authority control plus a relation. So I think you're making it more complicated to actually do the configuration. Okay, I was, uh, uh, when we have this, uh, we can assume that this uh, field name, it has um, entities, right? Yes. So we don't need this. Yes, that's, this, that's this we don't. We don't need that. So that can definitely be removed. Okay, but the, this means that all um, fields will have. Um, um, support for uh, relationships i don't think there's a problem in supporting it for all fields it may not have use case for every field type but uh, i don't see it as a problem to support it Okay, uh, I don't know uh, if anyone has any other su suggestion. I can. Um... Well, what we could alternatively do, because I wasn't clear about what exactly you were going to change. If you could create an, an alternative uh, pull request on the REST contract, we can maybe discuss okay. alternatives next week. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I will try to include my suggestion. And we can bring this to discussion for our next meeting.
and try to close this as soon as possible. Sorry. Um, Levin, I think you just uh, add this uh, to our agenda. I don't know if you want to share your screen or something like that. I can stop my share. Yeah, I just want to quickly show what progress we have today. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, this is the the use case where you have a journal volume and you want to select the journal issues that are part of this volume and you see here um, a field where you can't type anything so it's one where it's only relationships so no plain text with the lookup button here um, we didn't implement the the auto suggest as you have them as you have it in your mockups yet, Paolo. Because um, this is just the first version. Um, and if you click on the lookup button, you get this modal window, where right now it's using radio buttons here because there is only one um, issue that you can select in this case. And you see the different issues you have a search query the facets are not there yet but they're coming um, and then you can click on a journal issue click on okay and then that has been added here um, to the to uh, the field and when you click on the add button you actually add it as a metadata value to um, uh, the submission that's that kind of like two-step process um, but where we do want to change the design a little bit more so that the two-step process happens with less clicks and, and uh, not uh, with, uh, having to, to um, uh, close the window and open it again etc but um, we'll come back to that next week this is the alternative where you have uh, the option of adding multiple issues to the volume. So you have checkboxes, you can click on two of them. And then this uh, control here behaves similarly to what you have in, in, in Gmail, for example. And it also has the option to select everything on the page, to deselect everything on this particular page, to select all or to deselect all of the items. So if you click select all, that's what you get. And then they're added as a list here to the to um, this field. And when you click on add, they're added as individual um, uh, issues uh, to this particular volume. So just gonna keep it like this. Um, well, this was just the first step um, to start working on it. Um, but we'll elaborate on this and, and get it more in line with what we have in the mockups uh, in the next few steps. Sounds good. Thank you, Levin. No problem. Um, so, uh, let me share again my screen. Uh, we have already discussed this in our last meeting um, regarding the the identifiers. Um, we already have uh, in this space some fields, some type fields that um, um, that enables the the to describe identifiers, in this case, uh, the URE. Uh, that can be used uh, for ORCID, or we can, I think we can 
have several strategies to approach this or uh, rely on none of them. Uh, the first one is to use um, DC identifier where you are e to to URI to 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 specify the 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 identifier in this case uh, our kid. Uh, I think we will have more identifiers. I gave some examples here like uh, Ijni or Ring Gold. Um, we can specify also uh, some qualifiers. Uh, we have over this, this space already have done this for other identifiers like uh, ESSN or something like that. And we can create, create up, up front some and foresee some, some of these identifiers or uh, give the, the installers the, um, the the decision to which uh, one of the, which one to to use, and the last option I think it's the most complicated because uh, we don't have the 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 control over it, uh, which is to rely on schema.org. They already have, for instance, a dance number f for uh, the organization schema, but uh, perhaps they, they will, ha will take some time to, to add uh, or key them or other identifiers um, to, to support uh, what we need. Um, Currently, <laughs> I'm just giving my opinion. Currently, I tend to uh, give the installers the the best way to to decide uh, which um, uh, qualifiers or or uh, or or even other fields to describe the the, the their metadata. But I will. Uh, I would like to to hear from you. What do you think about it? Yeah, I thought. Um, I mean, I think we should better table this discussion for later and first see what we get from feedback from Orchid. Um, Dim already um, issued a request to them. Um, Schema and I just, arc. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and I actually forgot to mention one thing, um, if I can quickly have the, the screen back. Okay. So I, I think these are good options and should be considered, um, but we should leave it for when we get some more feedback um, from Tim, from Tim's request. So yeah, I just forgot one thing, um, small thing. That's something that Tim brought up. It's in a JIRA ticket, Ben. I don't know if you can paste a link to the JIRA ticket. I'll look at it. So there was uh, some confusion around left label and right label and is author of publication and is publication of author. Um, so it wasn't very clear whether, for example, left label applies to which arrow. Is it to Yes, I, I, have, I have also uh, the same uh, questions. I had to see examples, what uh, was done to... to to replicate or to do to my model or schema. Yeah, that, that's one thing. Um, and then the second thing is that the relations were currently backward, um, backwards in the sense that you want to use is author of publication um, in the direction of the author to the publication so that it appears on in the author metadata, quote unquote, um, as this, object that you're describing is the author and you're pointing to the publication. So I just wanted to show you how we're going to change it. Okay. So we're going to, there has to be an S here because it's left words label and right words label. But so left words label means that it's the arrow pointing leftward. And the right words label is the, the arrow pointing rightward. So to the right type, of the relationship. And we're just gonna make this a small change 
um, but it's affected in, in, in a lot of different locations. So we just wanted to make sure that nobody has any objections to this before we make that change because it, it does involve touching a lot of files. So if anybody has any objections or comments. This, this will be changed or this is the final version? Just to, to be... Uh... So this would be the final version. I know, are you still seeing my screen? Because it says here, sharing as pause, bring your shared window to the front. Uh, I'm seeing screenshot uh, uh, the, f the first tab in your... In your... Uh... Oh, that's weird. And you don't see the second one. Okay, no, hold on. no. Um, okay, do you see the second one now? Second tab. Resume share. That's weird. Okay, no, it's, it's still no, it's, it's not changing. No, that's weird. If I change tabs, apparently that doesn't work. Okay, this is going to be the final version. Okay. So you have left words label, which basically says that it's pointing to the left type. So it's pointing leftward, and the right words label is pointing rightward to the right type of the relation. And so you would also have on the publication page, you would see is publication of author. So that publication comes first because that's the object you're describing and it's pointing to an author. And on the author page, it would be publication. Uh, is author of publication, meaning that you describe the author and um, you're pointing to the publication. So it's more clear that the left words label points to the left type and the right words label points to the right type. So the relation. I agree. I agree with this change. It, it is more uh, left or left, right. Um, it does seem easier to understand. Okay. Uh, looking at the picture. <laughs> If you remove the picture, sometimes when you are just uh, uh, configuring the file, you, ha you have this uh, doubt in your mind, which is the left or right side. I think uh, this picture should be all, always uh, present uh, in... Um, uh, yeah, we can add that to the documentation. Yes. But now it's more clear, like uh, uh, the before it was left label and right label where we meant that the left label points to the left object. But if you say left word, then it's yes, uh, for, publication. for English native speakers, easier to understand that it's pointing to the left. So. Anyway, but it, yeah, it's just a small thing because I'm aware of the time. Um, it's the, if there are no objections, we'll just make that change um, and make it more clear. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Living, for, for um, better um, describe this. Um, we are on the top of the hour, so um, signing uh, things. I, I don't have, I, I'd search, but I didn't see any new pull requests. Um, but there are uh, through two that don't have a second reviewer. I can uh, assign me to, to, to them or self-assign self it to, to, to them. Uh, and if- Can you I share your screen account? Oh, sorry. Oh, makes sorry. it a little bit easier. Sorry. Can you see? Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, this anyone has any thing to to add to this uh, any information or uh, no? I just want to ask. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. There, there are two pull requests also marked as updated, where there were changes requested, uh, and they have been applied, so they can be reviewed again. Okay. Uh, and we would like to move the 4223, that's the second one in the list, forward as soon as possible. This one? 
yeah that one as well as the the one uh, above it so Paolo, maybe we can uh, offline discuss that uh, configuration um topic that we were just uh, discussing like not in a meeting but just in between so we can also merge the first one i i've already gave my my thumbs up to to this one um because we decided to 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 have uh, it discussed on on another meeting so uh, whatever came came from that uh, dcat meeting or consideration i think it, it will be a, another pull request i think as it it's currently still stuck because the angular side should be merged at the same time to keep them in sync and that's currently waiting on a review from tim uh, okay you okay. already approved the angular side yes. of Paolo, but tim signed up for it and he still has to uh, review it okay the, the, this one these ones are are the the priority uh, high priority right yes that's correct Okay, I will self assign the, the ones that need a, a second reviewer. And I will, uh, because we, we don't have any more time, I will uh, thank you all for having the, again, the, the time to, to discuss this uh, and for contributing to, to this meeting. Uh, sorry for anything that didn't, uh, uh, go as well so uh, i will see you uh, on i think uh, friday for uh, oh, thursday some of you and next week with all i expect yeah <clears throat> thank you for organizing paulo it went very well so thank you okay yes. thank you okay thank you talk to you next week bye bye see you, see you. bye bye, bye. See you. See you.